Yo, Wagwan. It's Mr. Garfield here, and we're going to be looking at a keep integrated mathematics question. All right, from module one of the syllabus, that is foundations of mathematics. And I'm focusing on logarithms again. Okay. Now I think that this is one of the most hardest types of logarithm questions that you can get in the examination. All right, so I prepared this question here for you. And we're going to go through the solution. All right. So it says, show that the logarithm of x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 minus the logarithm of x minus 2 is equal to the logarithm of x minus 3 plus the logarithm of x plus 1. OK, so here we have logs to the base 10, right? We know that once we don't see the base, we know that it is the common logarithm. So it's logarithm to the base 10, right? So let us show that the logarithm of x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 minus the logarithm of x minus 2. Let us show that this is equal to the right hand side of the equation. All right. So let's go through it now. So I will now say that this is equal to the logarithm of what? Well, you should recall the quotient law, all right? Recall the quotient law of logarithms, which says that if I have the logarithm of A minus the logarithm of B, then it means that I will have a quotient, right? I'm dividing the arguments of the logs. So I will have the logarithm of A divided by B. Okay, that is called the quotient law in logarithms. So if I have a difference of logs, I can write it as a quotient. All right, so I will have the logarithm of x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. Okay, that is my numerator. And in the denominator, I will have x minus 2. All right, so I'm dividing that by x minus 2. Great. So that is what we have. So how will I get this now to be equal to the right-hand side? That is the problem. OK. Well, what I will have to do here is to do some factorization. All right. So I need to, I need to do some factorization here or division, all right? So I will have to divide x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 divided by x minus 2, right? That's what I'm doing. So I know that you, many of you will, accustomed to, will be accustomed to the long division, right? But I'll be showing you the synthetic division this time, okay? So I will now say using the synthetic division. Great. So let us now do the synthetic division. I'm going to explain to you how the process is done. All right. Great. So what we're going to have here is the x cubed term. Okay. So we're going to have the x cubed term. Then we're going to have the x squared term here. All right, so we're simply picking out the coefficients of these terms. All right, so the x cubed term, the x squared term, the x term, and the constant. Okay, and I'm going to write the numbers in blue now. So the coefficient of x cubed, meaning the number in front of x cubed here, is 1. All right, so we're going to have a 1 here. Then we look at the number in front of x squared here, which is a negative 4. All right, then we look at the number in front of x here, which is a positive one. And the constant is six. Okay, great. Then we're going to put a zero here, and we're going to add. All right, we're going to add. But there will also be a number here to the side. All right, so we're going to take this x minus two here. And we're going to take that x minus two. 
and equate it to zero. If x minus two is zero, then it implies that x equals two, right? Good, by, by just adding two to both sides of that equation. So I will have two here. All right, we're gonna have two here. Great. So we're gonna now add these numbers. Okay, so one plus zero, that's gonna be one. All right, I'm gonna take that one and multiply it by the two here, which will give me a positive two. Okay, and then we're gonna add these two numbers here now. So we're gonna have negative four plus two, which is going to give me a negative two. All right, I'm gonna repeat the process again. So multiply the two here to the side by the negative two, which will give me a negative four, which will be here. All right, I'm gonna add these two numbers now. So we're gonna have one minus four, which is negative three. All right, and negative three multiplied by the two here at the side will give me a negative six. Great. And now I'm going to add these two numbers. Okay, so six minus six is gonna give me zero. This zero here is going to be my remainder. All right, so that is going to be my remainder for the division. And these terms here, all right, these terms here, those are gonna be the coefficients for my quotient. All right, those are gonna be the coefficients of my quotient. So my quotient is going to be what? If we were dividing the cubic polynomial by x minus two, then it means that my quotient is going to be a quadratic, okay? So this number here is going to be my coefficient for the x squared term. This number here is going to be my coefficient for the x squared term. And the, the number here, negative three, is going to be my constant in the quadratic term, all right? So my quotient here is going to be one x squared, all right? It's going to be one x squared. So let me write it down here. Okay, so this is gonna be my quotient, which is one x squared minus two x, all right? Sorry, this is supposed to be an x here. Okay. So this is gonna be my coefficient for the x term, all right? So we'll have negative two x and then my constant, which is negative three, okay? Great. So what this here is saying is that when we divide, when we divide x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6, all right, when we divide that, all right, we're going to divide that by x minus two, all right? So when we divide that polynomial by x minus two, it is the same as the quotient, which is x squared minus two x minus three, plus my remainder, which is zero, okay? My remainder zero divided by x minus two, all right? That is what? It is saying here, all right? So if I if I multiply both sides of this, of this identity by x minus two, right? So I'm gonna multiply both sides of this identity by x minus two. So I'm gonna have x minus two times x cubed minus four x squared plus x plus six. All right, and we're gonna divide that by x minus two. And that is the same as, we're multiplying x minus two on the right-hand side of the identity as well. Okay, so we're gonna have x minus two times, times x squared minus two x minus three, right? I would do 
we don't have to include the other term because zero divided by x minus two is going to give us zero. Okay. Now clearly you see that the x minus twos will cancel out here. Okay. So we're going to have x cubed minus four x squared plus x plus six is the same as x minus two multiplied by x squared minus two x minus three. Okay. So we're going to replace that cubic polynomial right here in the numerator with its factored form. All right. That's basically what we're going to do now. So what I'm going to have is the logarithm of x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 divided by x minus 2. Right. So when we divide that by x minus two, we, we can say now that this is going to be equal to the logarithm of the factored form of the cubic polynomial in, in the numerator is x minus two times x squared minus two x minus three. Okay. And we're gonna now divide that by x minus two. Great. Now, clearly, what do you see happening? The x minus twos will cancel out, right? So we can now say that this is going to be equal to the logarithm of x squared minus 2x minus 3. Great. But is that what they asked us to show? Let's just look at the question again. All right. No, they told us that to show that it is equal to the logarithm of x plus 3 plus x minus 3 plus the logarithm of x plus 1, right? So let us now look at what we have. We have the logarithm of x squared minus 2x minus 3. So the only technique that we can try here now is to see if that quadratic term in the brackets as the argument of the logarithm can be factorized. OK, so we're going to factorize again. So let's just do our work in here to the side. So we're going to have x squared minus 2x minus 3. OK, so let's factorize that. So we're going to have the product. So we're going to multiply the, the number in front of the x squared term, which is 1, by the constant, negative 3. OK, so 1 multiplied by negative 3 is going to give us a negative 3. And we need a sum, which is going to be negative 2. All right, that's the middle term here, the number in front of x, which is negative two. Okay, and the only two numbers which will give me that is going to be negative three and one. All right, negative three and one. Negative three times one will give us the product, which is negative three, and negative three plus one will give us our sum. Which is plus, which is negative two, right? Negative three plus one is going to give me my sum, which is negative two. Great. So it means that I can factorize this quadratic as x minus three, right? So x minus three multiplied by x plus one. All right. So these numbers that I've written here. All right, they are coming from here, okay? They are coming from here, good. So once you can identify the numbers and we know that the coefficient in front of x squared is one, meaning the number in front of x squared is one, we can just write down the factors, okay? Good, so I'm now going to replace the x squared minus two x minus three here in the brackets of the logarithm as x minus three multiplied by x plus one, okay? So I can now say that the logarithm of x squared minus 2x minus 3, all right, I can now say that this is going to be equal to the logarithm of x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 1, okay? Just replacing the quadratic in its factored form. Great. I'm one step closer to my answer now, but we need to write this now as a sum of logs, all right? So you need to recall 
you need to recall the product law of logarithms, which says that if I have the logarithm of A plus the logarithm of B, I can write that as the logarithm of A times B. Okay, that is known as the co that is known as the product law. Sorry, the product law in logarithms. All right. So I'm basically doing the reverse of the rule here. I have the product and I need to know, write it as a sum. All right, I have the, the product here and I'm now going to write it as a sum. So I can now say that the logarithm of x squared minus two x minus three is gonna be equal to the logarithm of a, all right, plus the logarithm of b. Okay, so it's gonna be logarithm of x minus three plus the logarithm of x plus one, all right? And is that what they ask us to show now? Yes, it is. Okay, so we can just come down here now and say shown. All right, we can say show. Great. So this is a question which can appear in your examination. All right, because factorization is involved in your syllabus. Right, that is on your syllabus. Factorization. Okay. Factorizing cubic polynomials and quadratics. All right. And of, of course, logarithms is also in your syllabus. Great. So that is the end of this question. I really hope that it was helpful. And if it was, please ensure to like up the video and subscribe to the channel. All right. And if you have any questions, please ensure to comment down below. I am Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador in the University of Technology, Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.